Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, in my struggle to stay healthy, of course, uh, between uh, Louis mushrooms and <laughs> and the passion of Susie, uh, it helps me every day. I know the clock is ticking, so I want to get on with what's important. What I'd like to speak to you about this morning is the imperative for a well life. As you heard, Susie and I's relationship goes back well over a decade when it was kind of an aspiration and I had the privilege to come before you almost a decade ago to give that keynote address. So first and foremost, I want to praise Susie for her persistence, perseverance, and leadership in really accomplishing the impossible, assembling an unprecedented group of global wellness thought leaders for a three-day summit to share, innovate, disrupt, evolving science and trends in the business and clinical aspects of a well life. Susie, I want to applaud you. Thank you. And interesting to note that she even picked the perfect location. Not just the beach and the beautiful Breakers Hotel, but the Ponce de Leon room. Many of you will remember that Ponce de Leon was the explorer who first landed in Florida in the 16th century and gave Florida its name, back then called Florida, meaning flowered. But the myth is that he was also searching for the fountain of youth, a quest that eluded him and numerous others who had searched for healing waters around the world for centuries. Well, today, pilgrims, the search has ended appropriately here in the Ponce de Leon room. For we now know that through the work products of many of you that the healing waters have been within us all along. If we make the right lifestyle decisions, a well life is well within our reach. Over the next few days, we will hear about the keys to a well life, from acupuncture to Zen, with numerous epigenetic inputs in between that will keep our genes happy and younger longer and also the business case for doing all of this as well. Almost a decade ago, I had the privilege to deliver the opening keynote address at what was then the Global Spa Summit at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. My due diligence in preparation for that event revealed an organization that had a global distribution network for content, a membership that aspired not only to run spas, but also seeking a much more relevant position and identity in a world increasingly burdened with preventable disease and economic burden. To be honest, I was jealous of what Susie had achieved with a global distribution network of motivated spa owners who had the potential to be disruptive in a sick world and bring tangential value to their communities. As United States Surgeon General, I had no such content distribution network to affect sustainable behavioral change, and that was my struggle. I asked Susie if she would mind if I challenged the group in my opening remarks back around 2008. To challenge them to think bigger, be innovative and disruptive. What can we do collectively to effect change and improve our communities while running successful businesses? She said, go for it. A little worried though, right Susie? Of course, the rest is history. For today, we have morphed into the Global Wellness Summit, which still very much and ably and successfully represents the spa industry, but with much more broadly encompassing value proposition that has the potential to be just what the doctor ordered a prescription for a well life. The work you do in the global content distribution network you have has the potential to create sustainable behavioral change that results in increased life expectancy and improved quality and quantity of life while decreasing healthcare costs. And of course, bringing added value to the spa world and destination health and wellness resource as global centers of thought leaders and best practices in wellness. Almost a decade ago, when speaking to the Global Spa Summit, I made the clinical and business case as to the importance of pursuing a well life. Today, the case is even stronger. As Surgeon General of the United States, my job description was to protect, promote, and advance the health, safety, and security of the United States. Try doing that in the combat zone. That's Washington. I'm not talking about anything else. <laughs> My portfolio included prevention, preparedness, health disparities, health literacy, cultural competence, global health, health diplomacy, and much more. Wellness, or more accurately, the absence of wellness globally impacted every portion of my portfolio, directly or indirectly, every single day. When I completed my statutory four-year term as Surgeon General, we were spending approximately 16% of our gross domestic product on health care, let me rephrase that. It was actually sick here that we're spending that money on. Today, we are spending 19% of our GDP, approximately $3 trillion, 
which is a huge sum of money as we're struggling with debt ceilings and all of those other things. But what's important that you know is that 75 to 80 cents of every dollar we spend in the United States is spent on preventable chronic disease that we cause by our poor lifestyle choices. Therein lies the importance of understanding the value proposition of the Global Wellness Summit. And this is spent on preventable chronic diseases like stressful lives, sedentary behavior, smoking, eating poorly, obesity leading to diabetes and many complications like cardiovascular disease, cancers, and the rest of the world is catching up to the United States. In a world without smoking, we could reduce lung cancer by 80%. Think of that, four out of five cases could be gone over a couple of generations. In a world where we truly live the well life, we could reduce cancer by as much as 50%. Again, three quarters of our healthcare dollars are spent on diseases we cause by lifestyle choices. Hence, if we do nothing, the mounting disease and economic burden will bury us, and the future we leave our children and grandchildren will be unsustainable. So in a future ideal world that we can create, what might that look like for a senior citizen who is relatively healthy, well, and thriving, and wants to continue to do so? Let's go forward to about 2050, a few decades. Mr. Smith is a 99-year-old healthy male. He's living at a wellness ranch, hyper-connected, healthy, active aging community. He walks daily, swims twice a week, occasionally rides his bike and does resistance training every other day to offset age-related sarcopenia or muscle loss. His medical record, genomic profile, nutrigenomic profile, pharmacogenomic profile, and psychogenomic profile are all stored in the HIPAA-compliant wellness ranch cloud and are auto-evaluated every day against his epigenetic inputs of air, water, food, general environment, sleep patterns, stress, and telomere stability. Mr. Smith also actively participates in other ways to optimize his health and wellness by being mindful in all his activities, practicing yoga and utilizing virtual reality glasses to transport him to his favorite places to meditate or just chill, as well as receiving various body massages on a regular basis. In addition, all his food is chosen with a nutritionist based on his nutrigenomic profile. All foods in his home are RFID coded and automatically are recorded. When eaten, nutritional and caloric content are uploaded to the cloud. Mr. Smith's Wellness Ranch senior community serves as his wellness home, which is directly linked to him via a subcutaneously implanted microchip that intermittently transmits variables such as vital signs, basic labs, gait, stability, physical activity, and sleep history. Mr. Smith's LEED certified super platinum wellness ranch home with air, temperature, and humidity optimization, color palette that enhances mood, an AV system that aids in de-stressing, a lighting system that complements the sound system and enhances neuroplasticity to offset age-related cognitive decline via specifically selected content in his psychogenomic profile, which are all integrated into the wellness ranch cloud. Mr. Smith arises one morning and is not feeling well. He has abdominal discomfort and weakness. His providers at the Wellness Ranch Health have already seen his automated transcutaneous labs as well as the autoanalysis of the molecular contents of his waste reclamation unit. This was formerly called a commode. <laughs> Mr. Smith's genomic profile indicates that he has lived a well life. His telomere stability and length are that of a 65-year-old. His lab values indicate increased bilirubin and acolic stools, possibly indicating a gallbladder problem. Mr. Smith, a tough retired military officer, decides he'll just tough, it this, out, tough this out. However, his provider contacts him when his cloud-based preset parameters and labs and vital signs show a change that requires a mandatory checkup. Mr. Smith answers the call via his PDA rather than his Google glasses or his TV, which doubles as a HIPAA-compliant telemedicine portal. A holographic Mr. Smith appears in the provider's virtual office accompanied instantaneously by his medical record, lab values, imaging studies, and his genomic profile. Mr. Smith immediately reminds providers that his end of life declaration states he wants no extraordinary care to just keep his vital signs alive. He says, I will die peacefully at home with my family when my time comes. He states he is happy that in the last decade, our society got its act together so that we no longer are spending so much time trying to keep everyone alive almost forever at any cost without due consideration for wellness and quality of life. And lawyers, health professionals, clergy, and ethicists accept the inevitable circle of life and support it. 
Mr. Jones, health provider, an advanced integrative health system analyst working with evidence-based artificial intelligence, predictive analytic algorithms, and supervised by a registered nurse and a physician, tells Mr. Jones that his time has not come. This is merely a genetic problem of apoptosis. That is, you have lived longer than some of your cells are programmed for. We have identified the genes responsible, and after consultation with our pharmacogenomic specialist, we have prepared a nasal spray for you that will reprogram your genes or bioengineer them that are responsible for your lipid metabolism so that your abnormal labs and discomfort will resolve. Mr. Smith, you know that just a few years ago, surgeons were still taking out gallbladders for this metabolic problem. How barbaric. <laughs> Mr. Smith is relieved and will now go out to the spa and meet with his large, strong social network for their daily workout, meditation, and mind challenge games to further enhance neuroplasticity and ensure that his body will not outlive his brain. He indeed lives a purposeful, well life. As he leaves the house and gets into his self-driving golf cart, the Internet of Things kicks in as his various devices begin to speak to each other. Mr. Clean, the robot, starts to clean the house. The drapes and shades are automatically closed. The Muzak turns off. The fridge and pantry are automatically restocked. And the waste reclamation unit is reset and cleaned as the thermostat is reset for a way temp to conserve energy. We now understand that a well life doesn't happen by accident. Nor will Ponce de Leon or any explorer, explorer find a fountain of youth for us. Wellness is dependent on our many genes and interrelated epigenetic factors like happiness, your personal environment, strong social connections, nutrition, sleep, mindfulness, massages, I should add mushrooms, <laughs> de-stressing, and more all of which may optimize your gene expression so that cognitive and physical ability is preserved and enhanced through the lifespan so our bodies don't outlive our minds and the quality and quantity of life is maximized as the cost of life is minimized. Failure is not an option since the trajectory we are on and the legacy we'll leave our children is unsustainable. We are the world's wellness leaders and leaders are the responsible for the destiny of others. This is our call to action. As Gandhi would tell us, be the change you want to see, for the fountain of youth is waiting for us. Thank you.